Hello and welcome to this Electrical Principles training video. In this video, we're going to continue considering AC theory. And in particular, we're going to talk about the different types of power that are found in circuits that are connected to AC supplies. So we're already starting to get familiar with the idea that we can have different types of a unit. So we've spoken previously about different types of opposition to current flow. And in fact, in the previous video in this series, we found that they bore a very strong relationship to each other. What we're going to do in this video is we're going to continue building on this information that we've looked at in the past two or three videos and figure out what our different kinds of power are. Stay tuned to the end for some help with typical exam questions and things that you might come across in connection with this. And understand that the next stage of this is where we finally get around to talking about power factor, which is a really, really important part of AC theory. That will be in the following video. So let's have a little look at what we've got on the board here now. So we had our fluorescent lighting circuit, which a long time ago, videos wise, we looked at uh, measuring voltages and currents inside that and we represented that. Here we've got the resistive part of the fluorescent light, the actual tube itself. Here we've got the inductive part of the fluorescent light, which is the choke. And we saw that the voltages were behaving strangely, but we were able to kind of figure out how those voltages uh, were behaving by the use of a phaser diagram. If any of this seems completely alien to you and you have no idea what I'm talking about, please go back and watch the previous videos because it will really help your deep-seated understanding of AC theory and help you build up to understand power factor. From there, we produced a right angle triangle that we saw was buried inside here with the voltages on different sides. And we realized that if we divided each of these voltages by the current flowing through the circuit, we would get the different types of opposition to current flow that are found within the circuit. What we're going to do in this video is we're going to change things up a little bit. We are now going to, instead of dividing the voltages by the current, we're going to take all of these voltages and this time we are going to create a new triangle based on the fact that we're going to multiply all of those voltages by the current that is flowing through the circuit. So let's just think about it logically. If you take a voltage and you times it by a current, what do you get? Well, you find power, don't you? We know that power is equal to current times voltage. So that leads us to be able to construct a new triangle, the proportions of which remain the same as these two triangles. However, the lengths of the sides would change if we were gonna do this mathematically accurately. So let's get our third triangle drawn on the board. Let's have a look at that. So here's our third triangle here. And this third triangle, try and get that as level as we can under the circumstances. We'll draw like that and like that and like that. Okay. And what's again important to bear in mind, number one is that you should really have nice straight lines on your triangles because my OCD won't allow me to leave that alone. There we go. What's important to bear in mind is that the proportions of this triangle stay the same. What do we mean by that? Well, what we mean is that this angle here, which we will call theta for the time being, this angle theta, this angle is the same as this angle, is the same as this angle, which is the same as this angle, which comes from the current being out of phase with the supply voltage. That angle is really, really important to help us understand power factor, and we'll explain why in future videos. So let's just think now about our triangle and trying to figure out what each side represents. If we take the voltage across the resistor, which is the voltage here, if we take the voltage across the resistor and times it by the current flowing through that resistor, it will tell us what this side is. And this side represents something that we refer to as the true power. So this is the true power of the circuit. And we give that the unit symbol, capital W for watts. Now, if we take the voltage across the inductor, so that's a VL, the voltage across the inductive part of the circuit, and times that by the current flowing through that coil, what we'll find is that we get something that we refer to as the reactive power. So this is the reactive power. 
Now the reactive power is measured in what we call reactive volt amperes. Okay, so reactive volt amperes. And that is shortened down to the unit symbol VA with a lowercase r in the subscript. So we've got VAR. These are sometimes referred to as VARs. Just a point worth noting is that often these will be referred to as kilowatts or kilovars or kvars, you may hear it referred to as. And that just means that it's been put into the kilo multiple. In other words, it's talking in multiples of a thousand, but it means exactly the same thing. So then what happens if we take our total voltage and multiply it by the current flowing into the circuit? Well, if we do that, we find what we call the apparent power. The apparent power. So apparent power is measured in what we call volt amperes, and we give that the unit symbol V. So again, we're used to thinking in terms of something perhaps being uh, 3000 watts or 3 kilowatts, but it might also have a reactive power of 1500 uh, VARs or VARs, or that might be 1.5 kilovars, it might be referred to as. And the apparent power, you may have heard this uh, when you talk about large transformers, you might talk about KVA of a transformer, the KVA rating, and that is the total power that it's able to deliver. So again, we've got this idea, we've seen that on this triangle, this side represented the total opposition to current flow in the circuit. This side of the triangle represents the total amount of power that the circuit is dissipating. Now that's a really important number because it's this side of the triangle that your electricity company bill you for. And what's quite interesting is that as this reactive power gets bigger and bigger and bigger, what's going to happen to our apparent power? Well, that's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger as well, which means you're going to start getting charged more and more by the electricity company. They'll also do some other uh, charges to you as well, which we'll talk about in the power factor video. But here you can see we've got our three different kinds of power. Let's just define these very quickly. True power. So that is the useful power that the system is using. It is based basically on the resistive part of the circuit and it is the useful power. Reactive power is wasted power. It's the power being used by either the inductive part of the circuit or possibly the capacitive part of the circuit. And it is the wasted energy or the wasted power, I should say, uh, within the circuit. And then we've got our apparent power. And our apparent power is the total amount of power that the circuit is dissipating. It's a combination of true power and reactive power. So it's the total amount of power. This is sometimes likened to a glass of beer. I don't particularly like this analogy because it doesn't quite explain the relationships between these things properly. But just as a rough metaphor, it's not too bad. The true power represents uh, the amount of drinkable beer that you have. The reactive power represents the head on the glass of beer, obviously the bit that is of no use to you. And the apparent power is what is the glass in total. So it's the true power plus the reactive power. That's not a very good analogy. It kind of helps you to understand that you can have something part of which is not very useful to you, but it doesn't explain the mathematical relationship behind these three powers very clearly. Because as we saw in previous videos, we've got our uh, relationships between the voltages here that can be expressed using Pythagoras. We've got our relationships between the oppositions to current flow in the circuit, which can also be expressed by Pythagoras. And amazingly, we can also use this to explain the relationships between the powers in the circuit. So we would say that the apparent power in volt amperes squared is equal to the true power squared plus the reactive power squared. And of course, if we want to figure out what just the apparent power is by itself, we would say that is VA is equal to the square root of W squared plus VAR squared. So let's just think about those all important exam questions, things that you might get asked. You might be asked, what is the definition of one of these types of power? What is the definition of reactive power? What causes reactive power in a circuit? Of course, that's an inductive or a capacitive load. You might also be given uh, the true power of a circuit, the reactive power of the circuit, and the apparent power is the thing that you're trying to find. And of course, we would just use the Pythagorean theorem for that. 
What we're going to do in a future video is we're going to break a coil down into its component parts, we're going to do some measurements on it and we're going to see how we can calculate all of the different elements of that coil including how much power it's using and what the reactive power and the true power is. Now in our next video we're going to have a look at power factor in a bit more depth. We're going to have a look at exactly what power factor is, how it relates to all of this information that we've developed over the past three or four videos and why it's so important not just to electricians but also to their clients very importantly. All that remains for this video is to say thank you very much for watching.